It had been three nights since Pippin had looked into the stone. The wind rushed in his ears as the dark lands passed him by. Lights licked the mountain tops beside him like dragon fire. Halifirian, Kalanad, Minremon, Erelas, Nardol, Eilenach, and Amundin. A desperate cry for help. At dawn they came to a stone wall and the beats of hurried labor. The guard, Ingold, let them pass the Ramas Ekor as dawn rose. Though the fields of Pelennor were green and rich, they were as good as abandoned. Before them lay the watchful city, its seven rings shining brightly in the morning sun as the sound of silver trumpets blared. The trumpets Boromir had so yearned to hear again. As the light caught the tower of Actelion, it shone as if it was made of pearl and silver, its top flaring like crystal. After passing the great iron gate, Gandalf led him through the seven levels of the city. Each gate alternated between the north and south, thus creating a zigzagging route like the entrance to the valley of Imladris. Except for the first level, the city was cleaved in two by a great bastion of stone jutting out like the prow of a mighty ship. The citadel was reached through a lamplit slope, which entered into the court of the fountain. The guards of the gate were robed in black and wore high-crowned helmets adorned with white wings of seabirds. They gleamed in the sun, for they were made of mithril. Upon their black surcoats a blossoming white tree was embroidered. It was these guards that gently led Shadowfax to the high stables at the sixth level. No horses were allowed in the citadel. In the court a sweet fountain played in the morning sun, surrounded by a sward of green. Its froth leapt up into the branches of a great, though dead, white tree. The third descendant of the white tree that Isildur once bore from Numenor, from which the droplet sadly fell back into the fountain. A far descendant of Silver Telperion, whose fruit still sheds light on the world during the dark hours of night, as the moon. Gandalf warned Pippin of Lord Denethor as they walked through a paved passage into the Tower of Actelion. The tall, polished metal door was opened silently, and Pippin looked into the Great Hall. It was lit by deep windows, held up by tall monoliths of black marble, reaching into the ceiling, adorned with a dull gold. The polished stone floor had traceries of many colors flowing through it, upon which stood a silent company of tall stone statues of kings past. At the far end stood a dais of many steps, set with a high throne under a canopy of marble shaped like a crowned helmet. Behind the empty throne, an image of a flowering tree was carved and set with gems. Below the throne stood a black stone chair whose occupant would now question Pippin for over an hour. After being shown to their guest house on the north side of the citadel, Gandalf took leave of Pippin. Wandering around the citadel, he met with fellow guard Bedegrond, as Pippin was now sworn into the service of the tower. Together they visited Shadowfax in the high stables, and went to get some provisions for themselves at the north side of the citadel. At the tip of the battlement stood a small seat, where Bedegrond and Pippin enjoyed their second breakfast. After meeting the other guards and being dubbed the Prince of the Halflings, Bedegrond took his leave of Pippin. At the old guest house in Rathkellerdain, or the Street of Lamprites, Pippin met with Bergil, Bedegrond's son, and one of the few remaining children in the city. Together they went to the great gate of Minas Tirith and watched as the captains of the Outlands arrived to support the defense of the city. Forlong the Old of Losanarch, Herluin the Fair of Pinath Gelin, Duin Hir of the Blackroot Vale, with his sons Duilin and Derufin, renowned for their archery skill, Golasgil of Anfalas, Derforin of the Ringlow Vale, and the last and proudest, Imrahil of Dol Amroth, with his swan knights. Three thousand men in total. Few, much too few to defend the walls of the city against what was to come. The Lord of the Rings Online, or Lotro, is an MMORPG released in 2007, and it remains 
in my humble opinion, one of the best adaptations of Tolkien's world. In this video, I will try to show you the hidden or not so hidden details that make the world of Lothro so immersive and lively. While Aragorn's fleet is rushing up the Anduin, the stage is being set for one of the greatest battles of the Third Age. Both Gandalf and the player character are desperately searching for Captain Faramir, the only member of the line of stewards that can be trusted with the defense of the city. Canonically, the time between the taking of the Pelargir and the Battle of the Pelennor Fields is only two days, so the game has your character cover a lot of ground in a small amount of time to be able to witness all of it. We begin in southern Ithilien, where we search for Faramir, while the Morgul host silently moves between the trees. After we have quietly crossed the river Anduin, the ferrywoman Luntil asks us to slay any Haradrim that we find while searching for Faramir. You make quick work of the men you find stalking through the woods, and find out that they are using ladders to quietly move supplies without having to traverse the main roads, which are watched by the rangers. Eventually you reach the ruin of Bar Hurin. In this game, this building is the ancestral home of the line of stewards, though it has been abandoned with the rest of Ithilien when orc attacks became too frequent. Now it is used as a base of operations for the rangers of Ithilien, a group that has harried the forces of evil in Ithilien for over a century by setting up ambushes and creating small camps and supply caches. It is led by a ranger from the company of Faramir called Amborn, one of the rangers that was also present at Henneth Anun when Gollum was captured there. At first he does not trust you with the location of Faramir, and has you disrupt enemy forces and find supply caches by following the small stone cairns the rangers use to communicate. Here we also meet Duilin and Dedofin, sons of Lord Duinhir of the Blackwood Vale, who have snuck out of Minas Tirith against the wishes of their father in search of action. We join them in a seemingly reckless hunt for Amumakil, where you overhear the enemy speak of a former human king that now leads the Morgul host towards Minas Tirith. After you gain the trust of Amborn, he sends you to a culvert in Osgiliath, where he expects Faramir to be. At the culvert we meet Damrod and Mablung, another pair of Faramir's rangers mentioned in the books. Faramir himself has been lost, and you need to enter the city to search for him. What you find is an absolute horror. Wooden bridges have been built across the Anduin, as the great stone bridge of the city had been broken by Boromir and Faramir a year earlier. Now, trolls and siege weapons traverse the flowing water. On the far bank, wooden rafts are being built to transport the great legions of Sauron. Any soldiers that get captured in the city are horribly killed. Some get thrown off of great heights, like the once beautiful dome of stars, falling to their deaths. Others are tortured before they are beheaded and their bodies are burned. Prisoners watch as the heads of their companions are stowed away for some cruel plot, while their bodies burn. You search the city, burning rafts and killing executioners as you go, though you cannot seem to locate Faramir. You do find a missive detailing a massive siege weapon hidden within the city. Together with Duilin and Derufin, you manage to find Grond, the terrible battering ram created by Sauron, named after the hammer of the underworld that Morgoth wielded in the First Age. While you sabotage this machine, you are found by the terrible leader of the Morgul host, Gothmog who you as the player character know as Mordorith and Eanur, the last king of Gondor, who was lost centuries ago. Knowing this is a fight you cannot win, you flee back into the culverts. There is still no sign of Faramir, so Damrod decides Osgiliath cannot be saved and must be abandoned. He takes you to the Causeway Forts, which we know from the books as the place that Faramir desperately tries to hold after he has been sent into the fray by his grief-stricken father. We find the captain of the rangers out on the fields, and we join his desperate retreat towards Minas Tirith. Harried by the mounted Haradrim and Nazgul, we manage to reach Minas Tirith after Gandalf chases the Black Riders off. During the escape, Faramir was struck by a poisoned dart, and while ailing is taken to his father. The Iron Gate closes again behind us. Osgiliath has fallen. Safely within the walls of the White City, there is a moment of calm before the storm breaks loose. You slowly make your way th up through the rings of the city, 
learning the passwords at each gate. After a long road up the levels, you reach the citadel and the white tree yourself. A fun little tidbit is that the white tree in Lotro is modeled after a real tree called Laugon, a tree at Oxford University, which J.R.R. Tolkien was very fond of. Near the Tower of Actelion, we meet Beragrond with his brother Eorlas. Beragrond has been spending a lot of time with Pippin, which has angered his brother, as he feels neglected right before the day where either one may lose their lives. You help the brothers reconcile and then reunite with the hobbit in question. You spend a little moment catching up with your old friend by having a nice meal. As the ashes of Mordor fall around you, you share your fears with the hobbit sitting before you. Soon enough, he will have to survive his first battle. We also catch up with Derofin and Duilin, who are scolded by their father for leaving the city. However, his anger cools upon finding out that his sons found weak spots on the Mumakil for their archers to aim at, which they start practicing with their father. After running some errands for members of the city council, who are in the Dome of the Sun, a building that contains all banners of each fiefdom and a cool Minas Tirith miniature, you are sent to the Ramas Echor to check on the restoration works. There we meet the gate guards Ingold and Turgon and learn of a second force of Easterlings that is coming across the river island of Caer Andros. After informing Imrahil of this second force, Gandalf takes you to the archives of the city, the same ones where he found the account of Isildur when the ring was still in the Shire. There he explains that the terrible captain Gothmog will likely take the throne of Gondor if he wins the siege for he is the last king of Gondor, Eärnur. Thus, a challenger has appeared for Aragorn's kingship. After you are freed from the archives, you are immediately taken to the Tower of Actelion, as Lord Denethor requests your presence. Deep within the tower, Denethor reveals to you the Anor Stone that is kept there. It is one of the seven Palantiri. Through this stone we see that the messenger who was supposed to request the aid of Rohan has perished along his path and that Frodo seems to be captured in a dark tower somewhere in Mordor. And thus, all hope of any victory over Sauron seems lost. As the last of our light slips away, the siege begins. Soon the city is pummeled with ammunition. Some burst into flame and cause great fires to erupt throughout the city. Others are far more terrible. The heads that we saw being kept in Osgiliath are now slung across the walls of the city. Their pained faces filling the streets with horror, causing soldiers to abandon their posts. Some you desperately manage to convince to take up their arms. Some flee the fight altogether. Together with Golasgil, Forlong and Duinir, you quench the fires and try to defeat the onslaught of foes scaling the wall. Legions pour out of the siege towers, which you burn down as quickly as they appear again. The sons of the Black Root shoot down the Mumakil as you clear the walls. But it matters not. The mighty Ram Grond, named after the terrible hammer of the Dark Lord Morgoth, approaches the gate. Its incredible power, aided by the magic of the Witch King of Angmar, breaks the Iron Gate of Minas Tirith. In walks the Witch King, in his invisible yet burning visage, smelling the fear of the men of the city. As dawn approaches, Gandalf confronts the Witch King, but he fails and perishes while Imrahil and the Sons of the Black Root fall around you, you are captured and brought to the Citadel. There you make your stand, together with Denethor the Steward, but he too is slain. As this nightmare reaches its peak, Pippin runs atop the pier, is picked up by a ringwraith and taken to Mordor. As he flies off to his terrible end, the vision begins to fade. This is what Denethor saw in the Anor Stone, what drove him to the depths of despair. Yet it is not too late. Outside of the tower, your worries fade away as you realize that Gandalf and Pippin are in fact still alive and well. Yet the question remains, where was Rohan in this vision? And so 
before the noose finally closes around Minas Tirith, you quietly slip out of the gate once again in search of the Horse Masters. The only hope to prevent this terrible doom you just witnessed. Thanks for watching this video. Though Minas Tirith certainly has its majesty, it is one of the most flawed regions in the game in my opinion. While the gate layout is accurate, it makes traversing the city a true nightmare. This is made even worse by the terrible performance of the game in this area. Everything has trouble loading as you move throughout the city. The first chapter of The Return of the King, where Pippin explores the White City with Peregrond and Bergil, is actually one of my favorites in the books however, and I do really like that there are a lot of characters and details from this chapter present in the city. I hope I have done it justice with my interpretation at the beginning, and in the next video we will join the ride of the Rohirrim in what is perhaps my favorite area in all of Gondor. See you next time.